right. Uh, well, this is Maeve Quinn, and from what I can tell from my uh, one of my computer screens, it looks like we definitely have a quorum. Uh, so thank you all for uh, being with us on this really uh, uh, kind of bleak and dreary day. But uh, our, this meeting will just be very exciting and just make all of you just beam and smile. What's so strange is that all of you are smiling at me, but you can't see Garrett and I. We're both smiling, but nobody knows because we've got these masks on. So uh, we are here in the city hall chamber um, to conduct this meeting. So at this time, I would like to uh, call to order our meeting. And uh, we do have a quorum. If you would like to rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic, for which it stands, one nation of God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's always a little challenging over Zoom, but thank you. Uh, for those of you who are um, joining us, if you wouldn't mind muting your, uh, your device at this time, and then when uh, you do want to speak, please go ahead and just kind of wave your hand, and then I will call on you, and then you can uh, sort of unmute yourself. Um, at this time, we do not have any uh, public uh, comment uh, by the public. The room is quite... <laughs> empty, uh, but uh, at this time, moving on then to 1.4, would someone like to make a motion to our, approve our minutes from October 15th of 2020? You just want to raise your hand if you'd like to make that motion. This is me, Lynn, so move. Okay, is there a second? Second, Sherry. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you saying your names. It helps our person who's trying to take our minutes today. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. Uh, and with that, um, I would like to go right to 1.5, in which I'm going to turn this over to our library director, uh, Garrett Erickson. I'm going to make sure I've actually turned on his mic. Yes. There we go. Okay. Uh, Whoop. I don't got think it. I... Yes. Okay. There Ooh, it is. Right. It's, it's red. <laughs> so I'm, I'm hot. Anyway, the, uh, what we want to do today is just, I, I, unfortunately, because we've been doing these meetings virtually, we haven't had the opportunity to bring Santino into meet all of you, but hopefully soon if you're in the library, or if, uh, one of these times we can have a meeting where more people are in person. Otherwise, I thought at least we would let Santino talk today. Um, apparently he doesn't have a camera, but you can hear his, his words. So Santino, can you give us a little background about yourself? Yes, sorry, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so Santino Laster, I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. Um, transitioned from Michigan um, to come to college at Lakeland. Um, just to backtrack a little bit, I'm one of 11 children, eight boys, three girls, so huge family. Um, I see one of my former favorite professors in the room as well, Maeve Aubrey. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, she taught me a heck of a lot. Um, <laughs> but I came to Lakeland, uh, played football there for my four years, um, worked security there all of my years, and then moved up to the assistant director of security. Um, and after that, I went into law enforcement, had a, a wide array of, of jobs, worked with mentally disabled and challenged um, adults and youth. I um, also worked in education where I was a dean of students, which is pretty much in a charter around the assistant principal and also taught U.S. history um, in the middle school. I um, also worked at Freighter Hospital for four years. I'm as a supervisor of security there of 150 staff, um, officers, and worked in law enforcement in Two Rivers, Sheboygan County. also worked at Miller Coors as well. Um, so I just have a diverse background. Uh, my passion is helping and educating and understanding and bring in um, inclusiveness and equity um, to a society that, that needs it most. And Santino, can you just kind of talk to the board a little bit about what you've seen so far since you've been here? You've been here a couple months already. Yes, thank you. I was 
that was on my, my mind to say. Um, we've been dealing with a lot of the homeless population um, and, and more so the fact of the, the mask policy. Um, there's a lot of patrons coming in that does not want to utilize the mask policy or utilize their mask um, and have their variation, variations of excuses to say why they shouldn't. Um, our staff has been very overwhelmed with dealing with um, handling these patrons. Obviously, um, their job shouldn't be to always have to be the behavioral management team as far as helping out with getting all these patrons under control and, and taking the back slack that they've been taking uh, from these patrons, disrespect and continuously defying the, the rules and the policies. Uh, so therefore, I've been stepping up very clear uh, day and explaining to patrons, yes, you don't have to wear your mask, but when you're inside of this building, that is required. You want to walk outside, we have other opportunities and resources at your disposal, Wi-Fi in the parking lot, um, curbside pickup, things of that nature that you can utilize if you do not want to wear your mask. So, I mean, that's just been a challenging point, and they have no rebuttal at that point because, obviously, we do have other alternatives for them just not to be in this building with their masks off. Any questions or comments for Santino? If you just want to raise your hand. Um, was that Kathy Norman? Would you go right ahead? Yeah. So, yeah, so our, our last public resource officer uh, did a lot in terms of, uh, well, I don't know about calling it mental health strictly, but um, almost like a counseling type position, lining up resources with needs. Are you... Um, similarly open to doing that or is that your approach to the job? Yes, ma'am. I've been um, meeting with community resource members quite regularly, um, trying to figure out what's the main plan. Um, hopefully we can get a strategic plan together of ways to address some of the issues that we have, but also to um, get the resources inside of this building. Um, a lot of these mental health and homeless individuals come here as a safe haven. So if we can bring those resources here uh, via myself or any other agency, um, I think that that would greatly benefit. Um, I've been working with multiple agencies as, as far as hopefully opening up uh, the virtual world. Students that might not have a home, home life that's conducive to a working environment virtually. Um, a lot of parents, that's their escape to have their kids in school. Um, and now that they're home, there's a more burden um, and these kids are being overwhelmed with the anger or other issues that their families might be facing at that time. So just remove them from that element uh, to give them a safe place um, to learn and to have a free space to, to explore themselves, I think is great without being underneath their parents who might be angry and, and just frustrated with what's going on at the moment. Okay. okay. Does anyone else have a question or comment? So uh, this is Maeve. I just wanted to um, just take a moment uh, to reflect upon our history about the whole creation of this position that has been developed here at the library. You know, it's one of those things where um, Garrett and his, uh, you know, staff really wanted to work towards how do we really have um, a, a position or a focus on trying to solve problems instead of just pointing out the problems and asking citizens to you know leave the leave the library and so uh, you know this creation of this position has really made a, a, a really um, has had a profound impact on just the environment and the climate within our library. And I am just so pleased that, uh, Santino, that you have continued in this role of really trying to connect with our citizens, make them aware of resources, and at the same time, you know, just really kind of, you know, echoing that these are the expectations that we have for all citizens so that we can really partake in this beautiful communal space of our library. So uh, I've had the opportunity the last couple of months to really witness um, Santino in action. And in fact, we had 
uh, a meeting with a citizen that um, had some real concerns about uh, one of our policies and, and uh, to actually have Santino in the meeting with myself as well as with Garrett, um, I was just uh, struck by just your focus in trying to resolve problems so that we can move on to a much better place. So um, I'm just thrilled that you're part of the Mead Public Library team and I'm glad that uh, we, oh, all of a sudden we get to see him. <laughs> That's like magic. <laughs> um, that, uh, that I just look forward to all of us uh, learning uh, more together as a library community about how we can connect people with their resources and uh, just make our uh, community just stronger and focused on uh, helping each other and solutions. So uh, thank you for all that you are doing to fulfill that. Thank you. And Santino is going to stick around. Uh, he and Melissa put together the updated exclusion policy on 3.2. So we'll hear from him just a little bit later in the okay. agenda. Okay. Great. Uh, so moving on now to 1.6, um, I wanted to just make two quick announcements. Uh, one, uh, you know, it's, it's so challenging with <laughs> this pandemic that all of us are not out and about like we usually are. And I know all of us would normally be stopping in the library on a regular basis. But this week, uh, the week of October 18th through the 24th, is actually the official thank you to friends uh, of, uh, you know, friends of the library week. And so I just wanted to let you know that um, on behalf of the library staff and as well as the board, uh, we have put together sort of a, a thank you tribute to our incredible friends of Mead Public Library. All of you on this board is well aware of the, the devotion and the care that our volunteers that make up the friends and what they've given back to our library in services, and resources, and generally just a almost an atmosphere of of you know of supporting this incredible library. So um, so at this time, if you could just join me in, even though they can't hear us and they're not on the call, <laughs> if you could just join me in, in our some, some applause of thank you for all that they do. Yay! There we go. <laughs> so. Um, and uh, uh, there is a letter uh, on behalf of our board that will be submitted to the friends so that they can have that for their, that they can share that with their members at their next meeting. Uh, we really could not do so many things without their continued uh, support. The other announcement I just wanted to share that um, within the state of Wisconsin, uh, many of you are aware that there's a People's Maps Commission and uh, there was a request by our governor for people who were interested in representing their congressional district, if they were interested in partaking in that process in trying to help our state uh, put together fair maps. Uh, and uh, for the sixth congressional district, which makes up 11 counties, one of which is Sheboygan and parts of a couple other counties, uh, is represented none other by our very own uh, Melissa Prentice. Uh, so she uh, is exactly, so here, here for, for the, we can give her a round of applause, but to have one of our own employees really represent um, our entire sixth congressional district and putting together a fa fair maps for all citizens is just quite wonderful. So Melissa, thank you very much for your continued civic engagement. And, uh, and, and we, we look forward to uh, future reports in 2021 uh, uh, about how uh, this whole process it will go. I do know that there's a public hearing for our sixth congressional district sometime I want to say April, I don't know. And who knows if it will be in person or virtual by then, but uh, thank you for your continued um, uh, dedication to our uh, community and our incredible state of Wisconsin. So thank you. Thank you, Maeve. And, and we all know that Melissa really has nothing to do, right? That's why she decided to take that on. <laughs> so we, we, we greatly appreciate that. Um, so with that, I get to move right along to committee reports, uh, 2.1, Human Resources Committee, uh, Kathy Norman. All right, well, the HR committee met this week with the important job of reviewing and amending and updating job descriptions. And the reason that we needed to do this is the city is undertaking a salary study 
Um, and so uh, Todd both asked Garrett and Debbie to get all our job descriptions updated so that they could be evaluated for the proper place in the, um, the packing order of the city. Um, so we, many of the job descriptions just needed uh, a little updating, uh, removal of a line here and there. Um, but the three that maybe were the most substantive in terms of changes really keen in on, on more of a strategic way that the, our, our employees are working um, was uh, Debbie's position, Melissa's position, and Garrett's position. So I thought today we would focus on those since they were substantive. The other ones were just more almost procedural. Um, Garrett, were you going to try to I, – I don't know how to do it with, since I don't have the – library description I can't either. sitting in right. front of me. So, um, so I think what we'll do is maybe uh, our committee just met, believe it or not, was that on the 20th? Tuesday. <laughs> it was two Tuesday. days ago. Yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's hard to believe. Um, so I think we'll just go to 3.1. And I like your idea, uh, Kathy, of maybe um, just focusing on the three uh, jobs uh, mm -hmm. descriptions that have, as you said, the more uh, the changes that we should just alert our trustees of. So at this time, I'm just kind of pull them up too. And you know, which one would you like to start with first, Garrett? Um, I think you start public services manager and that was just really, uh, we wanted to talk about that future way that she, uh, that Melissa had uh, chosen to write hers. Right. Getting away I, from tasks. If I could just jump in, if you go to your board docs, it, it public services manager, Attachment is um, at the bottom of <laughs> of all the <laughs> attachments of jobs. That's the one that's at the bottom. Okay. So I'm wondering, Garrett, if you oh, just want okay, to okay, sure. Yeah. And then, and if we scroll down, down once you've opened that document to qualification requirements. And this is unique in the sense that uh, Melissa had updated this and um, rather than using actual tasks, you can see she uses uh, ability to, and then, you know, um, put your words in there, but she sort of changed the format a bit from what we've been doing. And just, I guess this is a point of reference. Um, we, the, the, the members that were there that day really liked the way she did that and would like us to continue to do that on the other job description. So that's something this, uh, that human resources committee will try to attempt uh, over the next year is to try and get all of them updated in this sort of a way. If there's anything else on that particular right. one. And I didn't know if anyone has any additional question or uh, comment on that particular job description. We felt it kind of gave us a template for where we want job descriptions to go in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, if no questions, then we can move to library director. And that's kind of in the middle of all the board docs <laughs> attachments. All right. Okay. And I just, I'll point out just a few things on, on this that's different. So. Um, I did uh, put leadership towards the beginning of not only the position summary, but also the essential duties. It had been, I think, mentoring staff was start, started it off, and I really thought um, leading and strategic planning, change management, those sorts of things should really uh, start, the, start the job description off as far as essential duties and so on. Um, we had a discussion also about adding um, the work that, uh, like Debbie and I and Sydney do with... Um, the friends and the foundation. And so we did add a line on both Debbie and I's uh, job description in the middle about uh, doing that. And I believe, let's see, what else was there? And then the qualification requirements towards the bottom, we did quite a bunch of uh, things were added in there. So we added strategic planning, change facilitation, human resources, nonprofit management, fundraising, marketing, IT. And so as like now I'm overseeing IT as well as uh, the building maintenance team, so that's a little different than what it was. Uh, we put in their budgeting, policy writing, process improvement, procurement, um, community outreach. And so there's some things in there um, that were added. Um, and also I think the last thing that you guys wanted was um, a statement about working with the, res uh, as the resource library director in working with the system staff on the 
uh, system resource contracts. So we update that as well as make sure we adhere to it and report back on it. So those were the changes to the library director position that were different. Any questions or comments? And I would just say that. I, oh, Kathy? I, guess I would just comment that, it, yeah, in all of these, they're really, or at least the two that we just discussed, they're becoming a lot more strategic. Mm -hmm. So rather than just items that, you know, does circulation, manages this, does that, it's really more about uh, being strategic and big picture and change management. Yep. Right. Thank you. And then the last one, if you could open up, would be the business manager position. And that one was easier to find. It was at the top of all the attachments yeah. and board docs. <laughs> and, so, and so Debbie did clean these up since our meeting. She took out a lot of the highlights that we had, um, that the committee members had seen just to make it easier to read. Um, there was an awful lot of red in this one, but uh, some of the bigger items that we wanted to talk about were really philosophically, do we want to include uh, donations as well as uh, all the work that Debbie does with the foundation and friends group? Um, in there and so we decided we went back and forth a bit and we decided on making sure that we had uh, some mention of it but not overwhelming in the sense it's always a question mark of how much time she's putting in I can assure you that Debbie puts in more than 40 hours every week and a lot of it is uh, or some of it is on working the books for these two organizations but um, Maeve and I met with Todd a couple of weeks back and one of the things we talked about was um, we have gotten, we've received nearly a million dollars since I started um, from donations between the Friends Foundation and donations, nearly a million dollars that the city has not had to go through the capital improvements projects um, process on in order to help the library better itself. So we've gotten a lot of our equipment and training and, and other project work done through um, these extra funds that we get, as well as all the programming. A lot of the, the programming costs are drawn from those accounts as well. So super important that's in there. And we just philosophically wanted to talk about um, should that be included in on the job description. I guess the other uh, major thing that we did with this particular job is we debated on the title of business manager and what to do with it. Um, the city does have another business manager at the Department of Public Works. And so we were debating is it, um, since there was discussion about um, the two jobs being a lot different than the other, um, do we keep the name the same or do we try to come up with a better name that uh, we could use that makes a distinction, I guess. And so I don't know if you want to talk about that, Maeve. Sure. Um, no, it was, it, it, you know, as all of you are well aware, you know, language is so important. And so, you know, trying to find the right words to really encapsulate what a person does or what their job reflects, uh, we just felt it was uh, important to do so in Debbie's case because the, the breadth and depth of her job is, it does not really fit under just business manager because of the additional tasks that she is responsible for. So in our discussion at our committee level, we were kind of sharing different uh, potential titles that would do a more um, appropriate, um, would be more appropriate for a title. And so the one that we're proposing at this time is administrative services manager. So, so I don't know if there's any other questions or comments. Oh, Kathy Norman. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to say for the rest of the committee, um, one of the questions the city had is, is Debbie really doing anything different than what other business managers and other departments of the city are? And we wanted to make sure to make, to distinguish that Debbie does a lot more because she's handling HR. Um, she's doing more than just preparing the budget each year and issuing checks and doing accounts payable and receivable. She's um, her job has a lot more scope and breadth, so we did want to come up with different terminology because, like, what she does is a lot different than what the manager, say, at DPW does. Um, and so we thought, and we're open to what you all think, but we thought administrative services maybe sounded more encompassing of more than just financing. Great. So if uh, any other questions or comments, otherwise we'll take a motion to approve all the changes to the job descriptions. 
Looks like nobody's waving their hands. So uh, would someone? Oh, wait, wait, there's there. Kyle's waving his hand. Sorry, Kyle. You were you were you were not just a name, no visual. So go right ahead. Fine. Uh, I move approval of the job descriptions as as proposed. Okay. Is there a second? Uh, Meg Albring. Oh, Meg Albring seconds, Albring. and then if we could do a third, Sherry would be the <laughs> would, be a, would be a third. Sure. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Okay, uh, thank you very much. And thank you to uh, Debbie and Garrett and Melissa for really working in a very short time period to really update quite a few of our job descriptions. And uh, we look forward to 2021 where there's a little more time to refine some of them and, and have mm -hmm. them uh, come back from our HR committee. So thank you. Um, moving on then to 3.2. Um, which is a policy you don't see very often on your agenda, and that's the exclusion policy and process. Uh, so I will turn this back over to uh, Garrett Erickson. Yes, and so just to, uh, I guess, set the context on this one, when we did start the mask policy, uh, um, requiring masks in the library, um, Melissa and I were looking at this exclusions um, policy, the old one, and realized it was a bit dated. And so um, we unfortunately weren't able to get it through to you um, last month. We had a lot going on, but we did get a chance uh, to take a look at it. And I know Melissa worked with Santino quite a bit, leaned on Santino, and the two of them really worked on this. So I appreciate their work, but I'm going to turn it over to them to sort of uh, talk about what they've done. And a, a little bit of the attachments, we have the, the policy is there, but also we wanted you to see... Um, sort of uh, some of the process documents. There's a form, of, uh, maybe two forms on there, as well as uh, one that's as exclu uh, exclusion appeals levels. And that's an interesting one because it's a struggle when you're in the heat of the moment as a staff person and you're trying to, the person's basically walking out the door and you're trying to figure out what to assess for uh, a penalty, so to speak. And so they're trying to make that judgment as everyone's fired up and hot and, and they, um, this is something that Santino worked on, I know, um, to try and figure out how to make this more fair, I guess, and I'll kind of let them describe what they did, though. So, so thanks to both of them. Um, hi, everyone. This is Melissa. I'll um, give a, a little background here, and then I'll let Santino jump in. Um, this was really primarily his work. Um, and the purpose, as Garrett mentioned, was to develop clear procedures for a person to appeal appeal and exclusion. And this really came up for the first time since I've been at Mead uh, this August, and I think maybe a week after Santino started. Um, so we had excluded a patron from the library for one week due to repeated issues with mask wearing. Um, and this individual felt it was an unwarranted action on the part of our staff and wanted to appeal the decision. And then Garrett and I looked at that existing policy and realized it was problematic for a few reasons um, and not very clear. So uh, Santino really did the bulk of the work here on uh, developing a process that really both provides uh, patrons with um, like due process um, and a process that is fair to them. Um, if they feel that they were treated unfairly by staff, but at the same time gives support to our staff um, so they don't feel like they're constantly being undercut every time a patron has a complaint. Um, so that's kind of the context for that. And then I will let Santino take over from here. Thank you, Melissa, for those um, warm words. Um, the reason behind having these documents created is it, it, it brings substance, substance to what we're trying to accomplish and brings validity to the process and the policies that are at hand. Um, a lot of this information was, well, oh, this is how we did in the past. This is what we have. There was not something that was fluid in the working document that everyone that, that can have and, and hold, hold to heart um, when dealing with patrons. So the appeal form is 
is a formality. We want to give the patrons a format and due process to say, hey, yes, after you've been excluded for more than 10 days, you do have a right to appeal. And here's the form. It could take up to five days uh, for a response, but just know that you will, you will have a response um, to your claim and we can move forward from there. So the different levels is paramount to building a, a, um, a document or a process that's kind of unbreakable and and it's like, well, this is what it is. And it takes the onus off of the, the staff to always make those critical or critical uh, decisions in the moment. Um, there's times that I've seen the staff says, well, we're gonna up it to a week. Well, what's the problem? What's the um, reasons for upping it to a week? And this takes off those variables in, in response to emotions being in, involved because the staff is overworked, dealing with a lot. So we just want the formality to be straightforward and we rebuild in the tier programs as well. So there's an exclusion, excuse me, an appeal form for the exclusion. And also there's a response to the appeal form from the staff or the leadership that's creating or that's, that's working on that investigation with that appeal. Uh, so there will be a written letter uh, via email or by mail or both with a phone call followed up to the, the patron that was excluded uh, from the, from the um, library for whatever behavior that was displayed. Um, and also, uh, we implemented. There has there should be levels to the to the appeal, and what levels merits the patron to be involved in. Um, the first level will be for exclusion between 10 days, and one month. So this level will be reviewed by the authorized. Excuse me, will be reviewed by our library staff um, with the proper documents. This is all in, inside of the agenda items. Um, so this level here. It's very kind of like the, 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 the basic level that shows to see that the process was followed, um, that there was no immoral or unethical behavior, that there's equity in how uh, this patron was treated versus another patron. Um, the second level, this is for the level of three months, one month, three months. Um, this will be reviewed by the library director and the managers and potentially myself as well. Um, Excuse me, the patron will also be able to request a meeting with the above staff in their appeal process as well. And then the third level um, brings in the director with the board of directors. So with the board of directors, either the president, to follow the process there. We don't want the, pro the old process had where the patron could just pretty much jump right to the board of directors. Um, and that's just not fair the board of directors there's there's meetings that they have and, and agendas that they have so there should be levels before we get to that serious offense where the board of directors need to be brought in any questions anyone want to raise their hand or <laughs> oh uh, Meg Albrink thanks so is there a separate document that identifies what the offense would need to be that correlates with the exclusions of various lengths. I see the appeal kind of process is different depending on the exclusion that is provided, but how do we decide, especially if there's a heated moment, you know, what is the initial length of the exclusion? And is that attached to a certain kind of behavioral um, observation? Yes, we do have a tier process. Um, I'm not sure, Melissa, if you would like to share the the um the new template that we were trying to use um, but there is a document that we are presenting where there's different levels um to the um, process for the, the, the violations um there's a section that says first offense from a warning all the way up to 90 days for the 60th or excuse me for the sixth offense um the more severe we added a fourth tier which some of them start off at 90 days six months and then administrative review due to the nature of it, which will be a verbal abuse to staff if continued after warning, discriminatory, obscene, profanity. So there are levels um, that you can look at this document and say, yes, this is where that falls in and this is where the exclusion will, will lie. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right, uh, would someone like to make a motion to approve the new exclusion policy and process? Uh, Kyle Welton? Is there a second? Second. Uh, Kathy Norman seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 
Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, thank you both to Melissa and Santino for putting together a very detailed uh, process and uh, policy. And I just hope it uh, leads to better communication and better understanding of all of our citizens with our particular policies that we have for our library. So thank you. Uh, next up, uh, moving on to the director's report, 2021 operating budget. Garrett. Thanks, Maeve. Um, and so the first one, 4.1, I've just, I put that in there and I've gotten wiser over the few years that we always keep that in here at this time of the year because things change by the day sometimes. And I'm happy to say that um, the budget that you passed last week, a week from t today, has not changed. The <laughs> board, uh, excuse me, the Common Council had their first take a, a look at it. And I know Mary Lynn was in that. They had a discussion about the various departments. I don't think anything changed uh, from the library's perspective. Um, we, they talked a little bit about our finances, but uh, that was, and we talked, I think, about healthcare a bit, that there was a little bit of extra money given to the library to help with the offset some of the healthcare costs that we're uh, collecting this year due to some changes and uh, more staff taking on the healthcare coverage. But I believe that was about it, right, Mary Lynn? <laughs> yep, Mary, Mary Lynn. She's nodding. Yep. Yep, sounds good. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think that was about it for the library. So, um, so far, so good. The Common Council is going to take another uh, meeting to talk about the budget and then get that passed, I believe, the first week in November is the okay. thought. And, so, uh, oh, Mary Lynn Donahue, yes. And I would just point out that there is a public hearing. Um, mm -hmm on the budget uh, next Monday uh, at six, I believe, after the Finance and Personnel Committee meeting. Um, so if you have an interest in showing up, it won't be like our 60 strong in years past, but that's good. <laughs> I, I always like to show up for that particular one. It's just, uh, so I will be there, be it virtually or in person or whatever <laughs> is. <laughs> so I will. I will be there on behalf of the library and anyone who would like to join me, you're more than welcome. So, thank you. Okay, and on 4.2, I'll delegate that to uh, Melissa Prentice. Hello, everyone. Um, so I don't have a ton of program updates. We, we're not doing a lot of programs, as you know. Um, I can tell you that uh, Lil Rev continues to do fantastic, draw large numbers every week for his programs. Um, so we're continuing those. Great Decisions has been airing on WSCS on Thursday evenings at 8 o'clock since September 24th. The last session is airing this evening. Uh, attendance for that did start out pretty strong with over 80 people viewing the first session. And we have seen those numbers falling off a bit for later sessions. Um, you know, the virtual programs are tricky. It's hard to know what, uh, what's going to work and what isn't. Um, but we continue to try. We're also doing a um, art workshop, Sketchbook Essentials, that started this week, and the first session had 40 people log on to it, which is great. And our Girls STEM Day last Saturday had 63 participants as well, another virtual program. Um, stuff that's coming up on the calendar, uh, Storytime Live every Wednesday at 9.30 on Facebook. Uh, we're doing, continuing to do virtual book discussions, and those have a, a pretty steady audience. We get um, anywhere between five and a dozen people participating, which is a really great number for book discussion. And then coming up on November 7th, that's a Saturday, we are uh, doing a Comic-Con drive through at the library. <laughs> so we were supposed to have Comic-Con this spring, and it usually coincides with free comic book day which happens in May. Of course, that was canceled this year. But we do still have all of the free comic books from the distributor. So we're going to be uh, including those in goodie bags along with other um, swag from our local partners for that program. That's Victory Games, the Game Board, and Gaming Generations. And so what we'll be doing is having people drive through the, uh, the library book drop lane to pick up their bags. Uh, while supplies last on November 7th. Last time we met in September, I shared with you some of the issues we've been having at the library with mask enforcement. 
Um, and I do have some updates on that. September was a particularly challenging month and I can say we've seen some improvement. Um, I think that it really is due to the uh, increased infection rates. People are self-selecting to either stay home or when they do go out, they're being much more conscientious and careful, which is a good thing. Um, so we have overall had a reduction in those uh, enforcement interactions around masks and significantly less of the um, hostile interactions. So um, that's a good thing. You know, uh, many people still need to be reminded to keep their masks on or to wear them properly. But um, I shared some numbers last time that we had um, in September 48 hostile interactions regarding masks and resulting in 18 exclusions. Mm -hmm. So in the last month, we would have, we've had 15 of those type of interactions and just four exclusions. So that has helped a lot with uh, that staff stress level that we talked a little bit about. But knowing that we're going to be wearing masks for probably another year, we expect this enforcement issue to, to continue to be something we're dealing with to varying degrees. Um, so... You know, the management team, we continue to think about solutions to help mitigate those stress issues for staff. And I am still seeking some support from Mental Health America to, um, to bring in some de-stressing activities for staff that we can do um, at least on a weekly basis, maybe more often. Um, so that's all I have, unless anyone has questions. Any uh, questions or comments? Uh, I, I just have uh, two comments I wanted to share, Melissa. I saw that the library is actually having a workshop to decorate a mask, and you can stop by and pick up supplies. I just thought that was brilliant. I don't remember any details of when, but um, I just thought that was uh, just, just a great idea to try to, you know, decorate your mask and try to have fun with it. And maybe it's more fun to wear one you create yourself. So whoever came up with that idea, bravo. <laughs> and, uh, and then the other thing I just wanted to share is that there was a post talking about, I think now magazines are being added to Libby. And I think you, the Libby app, the online app, I think you talked a little bit about that last month, but uh, there was something on our you know, social media feed where it highlighted that. And because of that, three separate people reached out to me and asked, how can they get a library card so that they can read their magazine? So, <laughs> so that's my anecdotal story for you that it's, it's interesting what people uh, connect with as they realize that, oh my goodness, the library has this resource. And I guess I, guess I want to find out more about that. So uh, please pass on to Josh that he is continuing to really put... I think a lot of unique uh, uh, um, advertising of the different resources and programming that you are all trying to do at the library. So thank you. Thank okay. You, Maeve. On right. uh, four point three is uh, Cheryl's area. Now, last week Cheryl had reported on the change from the DPI recommendations to go from a four to a single day for quarantine and materials. And that's sort of what they have been working on. I don't think Cheryl had anything to add to that. Or did you come up with anything, Cheryl? I know that's what you've been working on. Uh, nope, that was all yeah. that I had. Thanks. Thanks, Cheryl. So uh, then we'll move on to building projects. That's an attachment from our, our building supervisor. There's several projects going on. We're working on, uh, well, we've been working on our HVAC system. That's a continual thing. Um, we've been looking at some uh, office furniture that's still coming in as well for the staff to make sure we're uh, safe and separated. Um, we're working downstairs on a staff lounge. We have some very, very old furniture down there and, and uh, appliances that don't work anymore and so on. So those are some of the major things that we have coming up that are listed. Um, they've been doing a great job and working through a lot of projects for us. So any questions on anything under the director's report? Wonderful. Uh, well, thank you for the, all those updates. Moving on to number five, uh, 5.1 Monarch si Library System. I'm going to turn this right over to Nancy Manchin. Hello, everyone. Um, the Monarch System um, Board of Trustees last met on September the 10th. They did not have 
in October meeting. We've had uh, a change in the officers of the Monarch system. Mark Hansen, who some of you know uh, from the merger, uh, resigned as president of the board. He has uh, new positions at the university um, that he's affiliated with. And uh, Tom Doan will be acting president um, until the board meets to elect new officers. And uh, John Kotska uh, will serve as his vice president uh, during that time. Um, let's see. Um, they, of course, talked about their work, be, uh, what's required because of COVID and work from home. Um, there was discussion about the office location and the lease uh, renewal. There is um, an operations committee. I'm on that committee. We have not met yet since October to talk about um, what does the lease say about moving? What would that entail? Where might we go, et cetera? And Sheboygan and Ozaki counties are, uh, in my opinion, greatly affected by that because of the bookmobile if the office moves. So um, as we meet, I'll, I'll let you know um, what happens with that uh, situation on the, on the lease and the current uh, office. Also, the, the Monarch uh, system was pleased with results. We had a billboard um, program out, um, let's see, I think it ended at the end of uh, September on Get a Library Card. You may have seen it if you were on Highway 60, uh, a couple of other places, and they thought that was successful. They were nice bull, uh, billboards and got uh, good attention. And the last item is that um, the Monarch system is going to pilot in 2021 a project for the DPI that involves a software product that helps with the tracking of stats for the libraries. And um, they're hoping that a grant will cover the cost of it and that it will also help um, the libraries with uh, good uh, record keeping and, and statistics. So uh, we meet again uh, in November and that's all I have from the Monarch system. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Does anyone have any question or comment about her uh, report? All right, um, one thing that I just wanted to um, ask, and this is sort of like a question for Nancy and a question actually for Garrett. Right before I came to this meeting, I saw that there was a press release letter signed by all superintendents of all school, uh, school districts as well as private school leaders and principals, that they all signed a letter uh, to our community, really asking everyone to kind of work together to try to slow the, the contagious virus down and try to, it was a collective letter and it was it's just shared by the Public Health Department website. And I'm just wondering, as we move forward, if things continue to be challenging, is it of benefit for all 34 libraries under Monarch all the libraries kind of have some statement or uh, you know, try to support each other during this challenging time if we continue to have some uh, challenging issues with people respecting the policies of keeping people safe in the library. So I just w thought I would share it under the Monarch because it's something that uh, I, I've never seen the Sheboygan County do before and it's under the Public Health Department. It's a, a, a statement shared by all the educational leaders in our county. I mean, to me, that would make a lot Thank of you. sense. I'll look for yeah, that. yeah, I will too. I had not seen that. So, and I really just thought thirty minutes before I came here, and I thought, well, that's pretty astounding. I don't know. It really should get, you know, further media coverage other than buried on page three of the county public health <laughs> department daily report, which they do a wonderful job doing. Uh, but I just happened to see that, so um, just wanted to mention it. So uh, thank you. Uh, moving on then to 5.2, the Mead Public uh, Library uh, Foundation. Uh, I just have uh, three quick updates and then uh, Nancy, uh, then uh, Kathy may have others to add, but I did wanted to sh share that the uh, 
the, the items of our wish list that we approved last month were also approved by the foundation. So thanks to the generosity of our incredible foundation, we are going to have some more wonderful uh, programming for adults and our youth in 2021. A lot of it might be <laughs> more virtual, uh, as well as some additional equipment and uh, some incredible uh, public, uh, professional development opportunities for our staff. Uh, so um, so uh, it's a, with great uh, gratitude uh, that we all have uh, for our foundation for continuing to enrich our wonderful uh, Mead Public Library. So uh, I will make sure that there is a letter of acknowledgement and thanks from all of us to the foundation later this month. And then um, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is due to the uh, challenge that we're having with our <laughs> pandemic. Uh, there will not be an advisory um, committee luncheon that we always have every fall of our past foundation members and past uh, board of trustee members. Uh, so we are hoping to have something again next year. And I also wanted to let you know that our basic uh, sort of uh, winter gathering of the Yuletide uh, celebration of the foundation that takes place in the beginning part of December, uh, that will also uh, not occur this uh, year. And we hope to do something in 2021 when it's a little bit safer to gather everyone. Um, and Kathy, I don't know if there's anything else I should mention other than those three items. Yeah, I'll just add a couple things. One is, you know that we as a library board approved to send our uh, 850 fund or our reserves or whatever you want to call it. We've called it different things over the years. Um, send that over to the foundation and you should be happy to know that finance committee is of the foundation is raring to go to invest that in a responsible way, the way they do the foundation funds. John Peroni chairs that committee and he is fantastic and really on top of it. Um, so that is going to be managed well and the library will still have access to those funds as needed. Um, and this way it's not something that, you know, the city finance department can you know, just casually dip into if they <laughs> see the need or desire. Um, the other thing is um, we did, you know, cancel the, the author event um, that the foundation was going to put on. Um, and it was a pretty costly item that the foundation board approved because we thought it was consistent with our mission. It dealt with the whole opioid crisis. Um, and the author did agree to refund us our money. And the hope is certainly that we will be able to reschedule that once things get back on track, but there's no plans for it at that time, at this time. Great. That's it. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, any other questions or comments? All right, uh, then moving on to the Friends of uh, Mead Public Library. And I believe Sydney is gonna try to join us with that report. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Hello. So I actually do not have a report. I was unable to attend their meeting yesterday, um, but I will bring a update to next month. Great. So, uh, so Sydney, I will make sure that you do get a copy of uh, my letter for the friends acknowledging them for their incredible contributions to our library in honor of our uh, National Friends of Library Week this week. So I will be getting that to you very soon. Uh, next up, our... Next up, our next meeting, believe it or not, will be uh, November 19th at 3 p.m. Uh, so uh, at this time, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Mary Lynn. All right, wow, lots of people have moved that. <laughs> so uh, uh, Mary Lynn, I'm gonna have, <laughs> I'm gonna have, Mary Lynn, I'm gonna have you second that. Kathy uh, moved that. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone who wants to oppose that? Oh, well, that's it. Motion carries. Have a very safe rest of the week, and uh, we will see you in the future. You too. All right. Thank you, everybody.